All right, good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing well. It's great to be back with you with our Master Unfranchised Masterclass. And Mr. Franks, as always, great to be with you, sir. Oof, absolutely. We are on week six of 12, and they are flying by, and great reports are coming through. Yeah, we had a lot of, lot of fun the last two weeks talking about prospecting qualifying and sponsoring. And uh, I think you're going to really enjoy tonight's session on really what to do with the GMTSS and moving tickets to these people now that we are sponsoring and building a team with. So it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, I find that there's always a lot of questions, believe it or not, about the GMTSS. And I'm really excited about being able to address those because a lot of times people get confused on how much should I use it and how do I go about using it? How do I get my team to use it? And, you know, and I think that's going to be really focused in on helping you all get a very clear picture on how this can really help grow your business tonight. Yeah, I, I agree. And I love, thanks for telling us where everybody's from. It's great to see all of you. Dennis and I always love to see that. Um, our man from Canada, the, the, the secret weapon, Andrew Chi, will be helping answer some <laughs> questions tonight. And uh, so if you have them, go feel free to ask him. He'll be popping in and helping us out. And with that, Dennis, why don't we get started and we'll get rolling tonight. All right. All right. I'm going to share my screen first. Dennis and I will be going back and forth a little bit in screen sharing uh, as we uh, move through the presentation. But let's uh, let's get this on the on the board. You know, when we take a look at what we've gone through so far, Dennis, it's been a fun uh, five weeks. I'm excited. You know, we're this is the last week of May. Can you believe it? Five months of the year done. Time flies when we're having fun. Don't unbelievable. It, it, it certainly does. And, you know, we're going to start off talking about the GMTSS and we're going to talk about belief in the unfranchised system. And, you know, Dennis, you, you've been around really since that whole system came to be. I know I've, I've heard stories of you coming in and bringing a lot of people in the business. And it wasn't until that basic five with JR that things really started to solidify for you. Yeah, without a doubt, you know, without the GMTSS, it really was going to be hard. In fact, I failed. And it wasn't until JR had me back, back off a little bit and then said, what we need to do is get you to understand how you build this business and not build it like an MLM, Jim. And it was like cold water in the face at that time. Yeah, and I'm sure he didn't probably hold back too much. He was, he was letting you know straight how we were different. You know, that's what Dennis and I want to do with everyone tonight. We want you to understand there is a system. We're very different. You know, when you know, we talked about objections last week, but when people say, oh, you're like this, or you're like that, this is one of the areas that separates us so completely from any other, any other business that you're going to see and to be able to understand. And as great as, as the system is, the system will only work if, if you work. That's something we want to make sure you understand. And, you know, Dennis and I have over the years had a lot of people build this, turn this into a career. And the, it may be a part-time career. I've had people in our business part-time for 20-some years, an extra 300 or a 600 or a 900, whatever it may be per month coming in. But think about that, that over time, what you could do with something like that, if that was coming into your life. And I know, Dennis, you've had the exact same thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to go back and touch on that big word belief, because one has to really believe in the system for it to work for you. And it begins not only in the global meeting training seminar system, because it is proven, but you have to believe it can work for you. And at the same time, believe in yourself so that you can use the GMTSS in its process. Early on, you know, JR kept pushing on me and said, you got to believe that what I'm doing works. And this was before we had directors. This was before success stories were happening. And it was like playing uh, sports and believing your coach in the game plan going into a, a conference game or a championship. But, but he hadn't won the championship yet. So you didn't right. know that, right? <laughs> and I mean, in reality, I mean, I've heard the, the story. I love what Kevin Buckman said to me one time. He said, 
We called it the proven business plan, but the only one who had proven it was Dennis was making some money. And we were all hoping it was going to work. But it, like you said, it was belief. It was faith. JR knew exactly what he was talking about because he had done it and sustained it for so many years. And it really took someone like Dennis and, and a Kevin and those early pioneers who, who did believe and then and took hold of this and have really become the biggest proponents of it. You know, it, it starts not with, when you, I love hearing JR talk about the GMTSS, Dennis, because when he talks about it, one of the things he always talks about is the GMTSS is there as a function of the fact that you're building in the homes, you're building one-on-one. -on -one. Nowadays, you're building on Zoom. It's because of the result producing activities that we need a GMTSS. Without a doubt, when you start, you know, when you start figuring out that selling products, selling the business, selling tickets, you know, there's a lot of subsets to each part of what we do. So we're digging into the nitty gritty, utilizing the GMTSS along the way. Agreed. Yeah. And, you know, that moves from, from the homes, it moves to your UBPs, which have been online for so long now. But, you know, as we talk GMTSS, we all need to be preparing for that day where we're moving back to live as well as uh, online because that will be coming very soon. We're starting to see it. I was telling Dennis, I was just watching my, my Milwaukee Bucks. I'm a huge basketball fan uh, on screen. And I went to the game Saturday. Normal crowd would be 18,000. They had 9,000 people there. Same thing like our international convention. Normal crowd might be 20,000, but maybe we'll have 10,000 there or 8,000, whatever it'll be. And the rest will be a hybrid. Everything is starting to come together and become open. So it's going to be a lot of, a lot of fun. There's also going to be the, uh, I want to make sure we all are aware, there's three trainings required. The, the new on franchise owner training, the basic five training, and the executive coordinator certification training. Now, one thing that, that Dennis and I know is that new on franchise owner training, it's a lot of information, isn't it, Dennis? Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it, and it seems to have grown over the years, but only because of the evolution of technology and the business and the way people are buying, you know, so it is understandable, Jim, but somebody going into there should not try to eat the entire elephant. They've got to remember to take it in piece by piece. And you go to these trainings more than once. Yeah, that, that is so important. And you know, when we say that, like, I recommend if you're going to be taking a live NUOT, like a Zoom one, one of the things you can do, you can go online and we've got three trainings where the NUOT is broken up and you can take those before even taking the Zoom one to really get a, a great feel for it. Because that's one you're going to need to take multiple times to really get a feel for it, as you should always, because this is the Master UFO program training. And if everybody remembers the master UFO, you need to do an NUOT and a B5 once per quarter and an ECCT once per year. And those are really going to lead to the local seminars, the district, the regional, and then really the bullseye, Dennis, is uh, International Convention and World Conference, the major events. They are the biggest show on earth when it comes to market America and building your business. And that is globally, ladies and gentlemen, it's important to recognize that. And that's where you're going to gain so many weeks and months of getting ahead just by being there for those four days. Yeah, that is, that is so right. Remember, your two to three year plan starts over again every time you miss an event. I love this picture because you know, I was always, when I started, and you know, everybody does things different ways. I wanted as much knowledge as I could get. I would have loved to have started during the time we've had in the last year and a half. There has never been more training in the last 14 months than what has been available uh, up through Zoom. I mean, there were nights, Dennis, you and I were doing three and four trainings a week those first six months. And, you know, I, 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 the reason I'm talking about that is because I never wanted to miss anything when I was new because I was worried I'd get out of the rhythm. And there's a rhythm to the business. And you can't go six months hard, six months stop, three months hard, three months stop. It's got to be a regular, easy uh, way to build your business by staying consistent. 
That is so true. And if people understand that consistency is a big part of success, then you realize why we constantly keep pushing on, get your repetitions in. You've got to make the calls. You've got to present the plans. You've got to represent your products and the stories behind them. That's why we're constantly evangel, uh, evangel how do you say that evangelist, but in and evangelistic? <laughs> yeah, right. We're evangelistic about what we do. <laughs> We're very vocabularious tonight. <laughs> you don't have to be super smart to be good at this. <laughs> That's right. Have some passion, some belief, have a lot of fun and uh, love helping people. And you're going to do great. That's what the business is all about. You know, Dennis mentioned this earlier. Believing in yourself is really the first secret to success. Because as well as everything works, you, you've also got to have that belief that you can do it. And you know where that comes? That comes from getting to a GMT assessment. It comes from seeing somebody else who, who does something great. I know, Dennis, you were talking uh, with your team Sunday. We talked about this. You were talking about Ben Ginder and, and how right. brilliant he's been in getting people to events. And that was my aha moment, my first World Conference, which was at the Knight Center in 1998, uh, Ben Ginder walked across the stage as I think an executive director. And he took the mic and he was so terrified to speak and barely said, and I said, if he can do this, I'm gonna be a millionaire. But what he was doing was being brilliant because he realized he didn't have to do all the training. He just had to get people there and let the, the other people do the work. So smart. You know, I, I keep laughing at that story because I remember talking to Charlie Bear, who's one of our great success stories in the business, and how he's actually part of Ben Ginder's organization. And Charlie tells the story how Ben would come to his house around dinner time, and he was selling tickets, and he was not about to leave until the tickets were sold. And so Charlie just gave in and, and said, Ben, give me the tickets so we can get down to dinner. <laughs> get, get, get on out here. Give me the tickets. I'm coming. You know, <laughs> I thought that's a great story. It is. It, so it is and it's so, it's so true. I mean, Ben was going to do, he understood you could get more leverage in one event than you could get in six months of trying to teach somebody something. And Wendy, I remember that world conference and I remember meeting you with that spiky hair coming up and saying, I'm ready to go. So it was a great, great uh, event. You know, don't let someone who gave up on their dreams talk you out of going after yours. It, it's um, today uh, on some of the accountability groups that I run on a Monday, we had a lot of conversation, Dennis, about keeping this really strong mentally, you know, and so that's what the events do. That's what the GMTSS does. It not only trains us, it retains us and then it gets our head in the right place to do the things we need to do. Um, and, and that's really important, everyone, to make sure your head is in the right place, listening to the right things, attending the right events. You know, the people that are on here tonight, Dennis, I'm going to tell you what, they're going to be better off than the people who aren't here tonight. Amen. And you know what? A big part of the success of the last four decades with me, and it's part of what I refer to as the Victor's Code, is vigor, which is keeping yourself mentally right, keeping that mindset in a way that you'll keep moving forward, overcoming the naysayers that constantly get in your ear. And I got to tell you what, folks, you know, unlike when we started back in the 90s, today it seems like people have been approached by more companies than not. So they're really getting ready to put the arrows back at you every time you say something. So you really got to have your armor on. And that's where the GMTSS really helps build that armor up. Uh, that's a great way. And it is armor. I remember Frank Kiefer used to say when it, when, when, when you got your belief up through the GMTSS and through audios, someone saying something negative, it'd be like a mosquito getting out. You just said, it's a fly, get out of here. But you gotta become bulletproof. You gotta have the armor strong and that's what this gives you. And it's really vital why your new people need to have tickets to these events. Your new people need to have a ticket to convention. They need to listen to audios. They need to be doing uh, the right things. And you know, you gotta get mentally tough enough. So, so. I, how do you get mental tough? I would tell you one thing I'd say about Dennis Franks, probably his greatest strength besides his perseverance would be mental toughness. 
the ability to take the hit and keep coming back. And I'm going to bet that's probably how your football career was too, Dennis, because you weren't one of the biggest guys. You were probably one of the toughest mentally. No, you, you hit that on the head. And I believe every one of us has this mental toughness, but you have to go deep inside. And that really comes back to why we do the business in the first place. You know, I think of, you know, Penny Lafferty. I think of Debbie Justice. I think of Wendy Moquin. I think of, you know, James and Marion Quo. I think of you, Jim and Lisa, that work so hard. And, and so many people think that you just get all yeses all the time. Uh, <laughs> but, but we I'm talk. Good. I know exactly. We get the rejection, too. But you've got to keep coming back. And, and one of the nice things, and I'll, I'll just do this as a coaching point, is whenever you have a rejection or you you don't get the desired outcome you've got to go back and ask yourself if you had to do it again how would you approach this or what would you have done differently and that helps build it uh you know there's a saying that says you know champions champions never lose they just learn okay oh i love that and that, and that's a very strong statement yeah so so how are we going to get that mental toughness well we're going to intend things you know, going to the UBPs and making it a commitment. I, you know, I remember when I started, we have a weekly UBP in the Milwaukee area, Dennis, and I made, it was 50 weeks a year. I think there were two weeks off the holidays and I made 200 consecutive UBPs. It wow. was, if, if I was here, I went and, and there's reasons. It was to keep my head in the right spot and to show my team what we should be doing. Never miss the local seminar, never miss the district, never miss the regional. If they're there, you go. That's part of what it is. And then, of course, the big events, none of us would ever miss those unless it was some really major personal tragedy. We could not get there because it's just it's where you recharge the battery and you get going again. And, you know, the NUOT, the V5, the ECCT, these just keep everything going. And now we have so many great product trainings and and university trainings of all kinds but this is where we get our head right this is where we do it and how we do it you know jim you have been one of the fastest growing on franchise owners from the time that you came in and i think it's because of the way you use the gmtss as the example you being in the front leading from the front and i cannot recognize you enough for that that consistency that you talk about and you know from the very first days you believed in the actual game plan, into the system. And you didn't ask a lot of questions. You just went after it. And, and that's really what it takes. And, and that is what it was. It was the system. And I said, the company wouldn't put it in place unless it was there for us to succeed because the company makes its money off us succeeding. So everything works in a perfect synergy when you understand that us moving products. What other company have you ever seen a CEO or a president or a senior executive vice president like Lauren cheering for as hard as they can for people to make more money, begging them to do better. There's a reason the system is in place. And, you know, Dennis and I talked about it, that there's really certain days you want to be in your own mind, non-negotiable. I don't even know if I spelled that right as I was doing that, but we're going to go with it today. I think I spelled it really wrong. No, I love this I slide. That. This is the best. I, I take this from you every time. <laughs> you know, if, say you've got five local seminars in, in your area. Well, then you're going to attend those days. No matter what's going on, you're going to be going. I remember uh, Lisa and I with, with the six kids all playing sports running to a sports event, running back to a local seminar, one being there, one switching. We just made it work. Districts, regionals, world conference, and then international convention, you know, it, it's coming up and that is the must. That is the, we've got to be there. And if you can be there in person, I'm going to tell you, it's such a big thing. But if you set in your mind, these are my days and you don't let anything come between them, you really said, I'm serious about the business and I'm looking to succeed with the business. That is so true. And I do want to just highlight what you said. You're looking at the local seminars in your area first. It's critical yeah. that we support that. Now you're going to see more hybrid models coming back. And at the same time, you still have the Zoom selections, but you know, you can get 
you be, you become a professional meeting goer if you go overboard. And and I don't want you to do that. I want you to do what you need to do, and I want you to you know, duplicate what need you need to do, but. Don't become a professional meeting goer. But I just had to say that. Such a such a great point. And you know, it falls right into our next slide, Dennis, which we talked about was when you attend, take action right away. You're on tonight. What can you do tomorrow? There's a reason Dennis and I have homework assignments after every session, because we want you to take action immediately. Because if you are just attending, that's better than not attending. But if you're not taking action, you're not going to achieve the dreams and goals you want to achieve. So attend and take action. Attend and take action. You can do more two days after event, four days after event, than you do in the two weeks before the event when you understand that. And, and you know, lastly, what you listen to and who you listen to is what you become. So it's so important to put those right things in. And we've got our audios that we can listen to through our uh, unfranchised media. We've got our YouTube station, and, and there's so many other great trainers in the world, but put positive things in to get positive things out with that. And I think, Dennis, I'm going to turn this over to you now, so let me uh, stop okay. my share, and you take it, okay? You got it. I appreciate that. Okay. And, you know, without a doubt, we all think about what we have to get done and we constantly want to be that example because once you believe, then lead by example and nothing can slow you down. And we need to commit to all GMTSS events, the non-negotiable ones that we push out there, at least one event each month. You know, your team will do what you do and not what you tell them to do. And it's really funny. We were talking earlier about this is that when Jim was saying when he attends the majors, he's constantly in communication with his team uh, where he's setting the example, wanting to know tickets sold. D tell us a little bit about that, Jim. You, you, well, if, if any of uh, my leaders are on, they'll be laughing right now. Because when I'm sitting, when you guys, if you ever see me, on my phone in the front row at an event. I'm not playing. What I'm doing is I am sending messages to my leaders and I'm saying, how many tickets do we have on the team sold? Because I always want more people, more tickets coming out than we had tickets going in so that we know we'll have more people at that next event. So I'm asking them to report back to me because then I know they're checking on their teams. And, and a Trino, White or a Lynn Mitchke or any of the, the great leaders that I, I, I have the fun of, of dealing with on a, a regular basis, Shelly Bo, they are checking in with their team and they're getting back to me. They're saying 50 tickets sold, 60 tickets sold, uh, 80 tickets, when I say sold, I mean purchased for the next event. And they're, they're doing everything they can to move them right away. And I know, Dennis, you said the same thing, whether it was Debbie Justice or Penny, that's how the organizations were really built, right? Yeah. That's how we grew fast. And, you know, in that conversation, exactly, because we did communicate with different leaders and their responsibilities to improve after each event that we were at, because we had a mission to get into the next one. And, you know, you set in motion, will carry in motion. And it's imperative that you and your team do that again and again. You know, I put this down because I consider the GMTSS events, the glue that holds our organizations together. And you know, products hold our unfranchised owners in the business, but it's the GMTSS that brings our organization and holds them together and allows us to sustain and maintain our business growth. And I think over the years, Jim, I, you've experienced this, you've seen some of the people that you've worked with. Uh, you know, I just get really excited about this side of the business seeing people celebrate at these events. Oh, I, I love it. I can't wait. And I see some people writing things on the, the chat saying they can't wait to be together. You know, it is like, uh, it's old home week when you get together and you get to see everybody and, and it's so much fun. And you realize as you're doing that, what you really built is a lifetime of community, a lifetime of friendship. Uh, you, you, you know, we talk about belief, but one of the things we also have is hope and, and, and we have that positive atmosphere. Hope and atmosphere are so vital for what we do. And Dennis, you, you said it perfectly. I, I look so forward to it. And it's one of the most wonderful things about our business. 
Absolutely. So let's get into the why, the what, and the how to sell tickets, because for whatever reason, you know, while some of our unfranchised owners are really good at selling tickets, others struggle. It's not so much that they don't want to buy the tickets to sell the tickets, but they find themselves maybe at the event with several tickets left over after their commitment to buy it. So we need to dive into this a little bit more. Um, first and foremost, I want to just make sure that everybody understands that selling tickets is selling education. And education, of course, builds confidence, it builds belief, and it gives us the insight to develop quality plans of actions. So anytime you're going to do an evaluation or a plan, you're seeing that, hey, here's the next event. This is what I want to share with you. This is a great place for you to be after the UBPs during a new business owner registration. Now, folks, if you're using your getting started guide, it says right up front in the first eight questions that it asks whether or not you can do the minimum to make this business work is about attending the events. It also creates a sense of urgency. You don't want to tell me you want to go and there's no tickets available. And of course, during call workshops with, you know, the one thing I really loved about this is that when Jim really started to introduce the whole concept of call workshops and getting together with the teams, the integration of ticket sales just started to happen. Jim, tell us a little bit about that transition and when you came up with that whole philosophy. Well, you know, you can do call workshops or text workshops for a lot of things, whether it's setting appointments with prospects like we talked about in the last couple of weeks, or one of the things we've done a lot of times is when we, we get within a week or two of an event, a lot of times that is the time where, you know, we got to make sure we've got everybody who we were supposed to get. So whether you're together with four or five, six of your teammates and you've got your list and you just start making calls to people or sending texts to people saying, hey, do you have your ticket to the event? You know, I know you want to be there. It's going to maybe give them a hint of what's going to be coming with it. And you, you show that personalized effort. You know, this day and age, Dennis, too many people uh, just allow to, to, to put it on Facebook. That's not enough. you got to show people you care. You want them to be there. And by doing it in a workshop method, it makes sure that everybody participates and you learn from each other as you do it. Perfect. And, you know, this is a great way to keep our stable and waiting people in the business. You know, it's very important. You know, the products that they sell and the attendance that they do put into these meetings, it's great because you never know when a stable can become go now, when a waiting unfranchised owner can become a go now. So we want to be very much on top of our game. So here's that next major event, August 26th to the 29th. And I hope that you have tickets in hand. And if you don't, I would truly expect everybody on this call to make sure that you make those purchases. I can't even tell you, how do you plan to grow if you've not made the commitment to be at the largest event Market America holds? Uh, this is the place you go. This is the place you recharge your batteries. This is where your level of belief grows, strengthens your attitudes, you know, get rid of that stinking thinking, you know, <laughs> recharge. You know, these are all things that just make too much sense not to commit in advance. Oh, I agree. And, you know, I see some of you doing it already. If you've got your tickets or if you've got your three, put it in the chat. We're proud of you for making that commitment. If you haven't, that's okay, but it's time to step up. If you're saying I really want it, I'm taking the time to be there. Uh, then you got to take the time to be at the major event. You got to find a way to make that happen. You know, I was lucky, Dennis, when I was, was starting, I'd never been to an event. When, when I asked Marta to give me some coaching, she said, well, you need to buy four tickets to the, the next major event, which was at that time, they were $175. So the prices have barely changed. And I said, well, that's what, 700 bucks. Why do I need to spend $700? I'll get one for me. And then if I bring some people onto the business, I'll sell it to them. She said, no, no way, young man. You need to, if you want to move fast, you need to have tickets in your hand and you need to be selling them as you bring the people on. It was some of the best coaching I ever got. She said, you'll sell as many as you buy. I got four tickets. Guess how many I sold? I sold four tickets. 
So at that event, I bought 10 because I said I really want to grow. <laughs> and I bought 21 at this last event, guys. I'm still doing exactly what I, I've always done as an unfranchised owner. Buy tickets, move tickets if you want to get people there. You know, and that's a perfect example of an individual that 20 years into the business, he still has the drive that he had when he first started. And that's really great to see because he has that belief inside of him. And so here's another schematic. Uh, and I just want to go back and reiterate that everything starts with a one-on-one, -on -one, two on one. We're big fans of working with a partner, but you know, it's still, it's at the coffee shop. It's a, across the right. kitchen table. You can do it on a zoom. That's okay too, but things are changing again. It's evolving. So don't be afraid. You're many of you are in States that are now opened up. And again, you want to take a look at that. And the home business presentation is going to start expanding again, driving into the unfranchised business presentations that are put on by the coordinators that have been put into place to actually run these. In fact, I'm excited about it because here in the Charlotte area, we're getting ready to start our UBPs again in person. And, you know, all of that can be done and you can still have your qualified prospects begin their mandatory trainings with the basic five and the new odd. And Jim, I, I don't know if you ever thought about this, but I really believe a basic five is great for a prospect to go through. 100% agree with you on that. Because, you know, I've always said whether it's a basic five or a local, either one, that way they're seeing the business. If they absolutely hate what they see, great, better to know ahead of time. If they like it, they're way ahead of the game. I agree totally with that, Debbie. And you know what? They're sort of interchangeable. If the local is before the basic five, great, because then the basic five fills in the questions that they get at the local. And if they go to the basic five, they've got a great speaker that's going to put a super approach on advanced basic five. And so it's a great one, two punch. And ultimately for those of you in areas with district conferences and then regionals, which will be coming up, I believe in the third quarter, you'll be seeing more of these happening. You're going to again, build to what? World Conference of 2022. Right. And uh, there's some exciting things happening there. But right now we're focused on getting to international convention. Uh, Jim, do you have any comments on this schematic here? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd say you notice it looks like a funnel and, and the funnel is leading to the major events. And, you know, Dennis and I, as we always do, as we're preparing for this, we just kept talking about if you can just get the people to the major events, how that'll work. Now, it doesn't always start by getting them to a major event. It starts with the funnel. Sometimes they won't buy a ticket right away. We get it. We try to move a ticket to international convention when we bring somebody on. But if they don't, we need to get them to that basic five or get them to that local, get them to the next thing to build their belief. And uh, this is a great description of how the business works. Great. And everybody knows this is a picture of a Dimmerod, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> JR made that word up. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> a Timurad is a pyramid uh, spelled backwards. An upside down one and backwards. <laughs> yeah. All right. So listen, we got to gain maximum leverage when we talk about leverage all the time. So you must not only attend, but you have to master the art of moving tickets. You know, you got to get them into the hands of others. And Every event requires tickets and you can't attend one without one. You know, you've got to have it in hand. And successful on franchise owners always pre-purchase three tickets to upcoming events and remain laser focused on moving those tickets to the hands of their teammates and prospects. And you could even refine that. You can go to your prospects and new teammates that have been recently come into the business over the last 30 to 90 days. Um, I love this whole concept of leverage, but sometimes I question whether or not our unfranchised owners really understand the full meaning of time leverage, Jim, because a lot of times we like to leverage time but at the same time, we're not thinking about how the GMTSS leverages time. And you had a great example of that when we were talking earlier. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, we'll, I'll actually show some of that as we go through. But it, it becomes, if you, 
it, it's hours working. How many people do you get at an event like that? That's why I always want to know how many tickets have been sold from my teammates to the majors, because I love that you all put down, I bought my three, I bought my three, I bought my three. One of the things, Dennis, I want to know is how many have you sold of the three you bought? Mm -hmm. You know, because now we got to move them, right? That's a big thing. And that's what's going to create the leverage is the number of hours of people that you have there. Great. And of course, meetings, trainings are the business. Let's not confuse it. You know, when, when a prospect says to me, is it one of those companies that make you go to a lot of meetings? And the answer is, what do you mean by a lot of meetings? You know, did you attend school? Have you ever gone to advanced education? How many classes were too many for you? How many did it take for you to become a master? You know, don't allow people to say things they don't really understand. Maybe they went to meetings that had no substance, but mm -hmm. I challenge you. In Market America and the GMTSS, there is all kinds of substance in everything that we do. And again, the meeting place is tangibility of who we are and what we do. And if you work with a UFO, they must be trained. That's a requirement, Jim. If you're going to work with me, if you're going to work with JR, you're going to buy tickets. I don't know how you feel about that. I feel 100%. The same. You and I were talking about this the other day. We said, not only are you going to buy tickets, you're going to be on auto ship. You're going to do the things that successful unfranchised owners do. And successful unfranchised owners, again, let's go back to why are Dennis and I on tonight? Because we're coaching up the Master UFO program. Well, what's the Master UFO program? You need to buy three tickets to the next major event to be able to participate as a master unfranchised owner. That's what successful owner, uh, unfranchised owners do. They also get on auto ship. I know I'm sort of throwing that in, Dennis, but to me, that's a big thing. I, I don't want to work with anyone not on auto ship because you're risking your uh, BV and IBV, which may not affect me at all because it, you may be down low in the order, but you're going to hurt people in between if there's a flush or a purge. So make the business simple and get on auto ship. Great, great point. Hey, so let me just point out to everybody listening, these are points that you use when you share tickets with partners, with teammates, with other unfranchise owners. You know, if they're going to work with you, demand that they buy their tickets, three tickets. If they're planning to earn that supplemental income and lead an organization, they've got to understand they got to be at these trainings yeah. to lead their teams. And of course, one day of the GMTSS training is a month's worth of self-training. And prospects need to be there too because they need the belief. And that's what's going to happen when they see other unfranchised owners who are there and believe that this is the vehicle for them to grow. You know, if you start thinking about this, let's even refine it more. Who needs the regular meetings? Number one, the emerging leaders. So for those of you with organizations, who do you think are emerging leaders out of your organization? So are you strong enough to demand the fact that if they want what they want, then they're going to have those tickets? And then when we start talking about the stable UFOs, they need to maintain their belief by attending one training or month. And you know, when I go back to a stable unfranchised owner and talk to them about a ticket, I ask them why they got into the business. And a lot of them will say this, and, and you know, it's fine. I love the products. I wanted to sell them. Okay. And that's awesome. Well, I'm going to tell you how many new products are coming, and I'm going to tell you about the breakouts, about how many great things you're going to learn about these speakers who are going to speak to it. So again, anticipate what a stable unfranchise owner would want. Again, a stable unfranchise owner like the idea of having supplemental income, maybe an extra thousand dollars a week, but ask them if anything's changed in their life and they don't want that anymore. Maybe just because they're stable doesn't mean they don't want the money. So get them there. Hot prospects. You need to gain confidence prospects. So with more knowledge and gain reassurance when meeting with other UFOs. Now, I got to tell you, you know, I'll never forget, you know, uh, Karen and Ben in Pittsburgh, who's one of my teammates, they came to an international convention. And after the international convention, they said, Dennis, we are in. It was Ed and Karen. 
Ed and Karen Kroll, actually. And they said, we're in, Dennis. And I said, well, that's great. Why are you coming in now? I've been talking to you for months. He says, well, we figured you were supposed to sell us. What we got here was people that had no interest in us telling us how great it was. And that closed us. And boom. boom, it was. It was like, great. And here I thought I was doing a great job, but they thought in their minds, he's supposed to do that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and how many times, Dennis, have people, and I bet you a lot of the people on with the same would say some of their best friends have come from the business at a meeting, but aren't part of their financial lineage. And they've learned from them and they've grown from them. All that goes together. Absolutely. And you know what? These are the small pieces of the puzzles that many times unfranchised owners forget to look at. And this is the simple tweak that can change everything in your organization. Um, this slide, no ticket, no money, getting nowhere fast. I mean, if you know Min Lu, who, who won the Jerry Siciliano Award, that is her phrase, no ticket, no money. Jim and I got together and said, you know, no ticket, no money, you're going nowhere fast. And right. so if you want to go fast, you need to become a great ticket seller. And, you know, you said this to me, I'm jumping right to point three. When you first started, you said you thought you were a promoter of, of tickets or speakers when you first came in. <laughs> I, I had to laugh when you were telling me that story the other day, but selling tickets is a results producing activity and supports and duplicates what we do. Remember one of the points we said, going to the meetings are part of the business, be it a ticket promoter, not enough of you dig into the speaker, mm -hmm. you know, and I want to recommend if any of you are, uh, uh, God, I'm having a brain breakdown here. If any one of you are category one or a category two speaker, it will be really helpful if you created what I call a one sheet, which would be a picture of you, some of the specialties that you have, things that you can send to the host of an upcoming training that could circulate it because people that sell tickets need to know about their speaker. And right now, you know, we don't have all the profiles up right now. We're going through an editing process. So these are things would be really nice if you can put together and get out there. Uh, we'll put out an example for you to take a look at, but uh, you know, that's something that will help becoming a ticket promoter. Also, yeah. yeah. Jim, any comments on that? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, and, and I know if I ask this, I know a bunch of you are going to put it in the chat, but who's the, who's the next, who's the best speaker in Market America? And the answer is the next one. It, it's, and that's what we need to know. It's what we do. It's our culture. We buy three tickets. We go for the local challenge. We do that and we learn about that next person. So as Dennis said, we can promote them the correct way. But the bottom line is, if nobody knows of them, you should still be there because we're not going to allow anybody up who hasn't built the business. And that's vital for you to understand that GMTSS makes sure that people are a category one or category two speaker and are earning consistently now if they're speaking at an event. Beautiful. And one of the things that we really want to push here is that you really need to schedule out six months in advance when the meeting dates are and what type of meeting they become. Now, I do want to tell you right now, October 9th and 10th is going to be the product symposium and it's going to be an online event. But the, the, the one thing that I will say this to you, it's so important to know when the upcoming events are. And Jim, I want to uh, spend a couple minutes on promote one major event at a time because sometimes this gets confusing because a lot of people think just promote the next event, but we want you to know it's the next major event at a time, but tell me where the locals and districts and regionals fit in. Well, you know, as we're promoting, like what's our next major, our next major is international convention. So we're putting a big emphasis on that, but the others fit in just like we talked about before. If that next local is coming, you're still promoting into that because that's going to lead you to the major. Um, what, what we try to make sure of is we want people to put a focus on what's next, but with the major focus on the major event. 
but we've got to get them to the smaller events to get them to the major event. It's the, it's the way JR built it, and it's the way it works so beautifully and has worked for almost 30 years. You know, you saying that maybe it's building to the next major event by promoting the next event. That's, that's it. That's right. Uh, something you can think about. The other thing that I live by, and, and this is how Market America actually started early on. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money, but budget your event costs. If you have your schedule, you can organize a plan to liquidate the expenses. And this is something that makes so much sense if you're selling through shop financial, if you're selling through web centers, those are large ticket items with big returns. The debt shredder is a huge return in a great program. Selling a website is fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, but then selling combinations, you know, selling multiple products for motives, selling the uh, fast start kits as far as the 30 day jump start kit in TLS. These are going to get your larger returns on your time investment. So if you needed to raise $200 for a ticket, you know that you would have to sell basically four 30 day jumpstart kits to liquidate that cost. So again, you can set that plan in motion. And that ladies and gentlemen is on top of what you normally work with base 10 or 15, you know, to maintain your cash flow. It's in addition. Any comments and there? You, Dennis, I remember you telling me that early on, I was asking for advice on getting somebody to an event and you spoke about how many, and I think it was Pentaxel they needed to move, what yeah, the yeah. profit was to be able to get there. And it's stuck in my mind forever to take that retail profit and use it towards the event. How many do we need to move to do it? So if you're listening, please, that that, that is really something a new person or a guests can understand that when you're talking to that new person on how to get there. Absolutely. You know, so one must build event to event and always get the intent on getting a larger number of people to attend the next event. And you know what? You, you've seen it with Stacey Tong. You've seen it with Amber and Min Lu. You've seen it with Jim. You've seen it with our organization. You've seen it with Frank Kiefer's organization. You've seen it with so many people. And you start thinking about what Jim said earlier. During the event, he has his go nows reporting back to them tickets sold because we know that you've got to beat the last ticket number that you had the big event before yeah. that. It's just so, so very important. Comments on that, Jim? I, I would just say, I, I would, if I'm you, that's my goal from this point. If I get 10 to the next event, I want 20 at World Conference. If I get two to the next event, I want four to World Conference. I want to be doubling up each time so I can tell that I'm growing. That's really growth. Growth is people at the events. Great. Love that. All right. So I'm going to turn this back to you, Jim, to take us to the finish line. So I'm stopping the sharing right now and back to you, partner. All right. We're going to, we're going to wrap up with a, a couple thoughts on tickets, and then we're going to call it a, another great Monday. But, you know, one ticket can change everything. And Dennis, how many times has someone come up to you and said, you know, I made it to that event? and it changed my life. Or I saw this speaker and, and I, everything clicked and I made a decision. It doesn't happen if you're not there. Life just goes on sort of frustrating, but if you're there, everything can change. Stacy Tong did the best example of this I've ever seen, Dennis. And I, I know you shared this on your Facebook at one point where she had all of her people hold up a ticket and what that ticket had meant in their lives that they got to an event. Um, so you need to think that way as you, you're, you're looking at this part of the business. And, you know, the other thing I just will say to you is that we've got speakers that keep getting better and better. You talk about JR, you talk about Lauren, you talk about Mark, but you're talking also about field leaders that are coming up there. The hmm. Great messages for you to take back to. Such great field leaders. And as Min Lu says, no tickets, no money. And you don't want to be this guy. You want to be the one who's doing it. And I was talking with Dennis earlier and I was talking about working hours. And what I meant on that was if I'm going to an event and I'm the only one with a ticket, 
Well, then I'm getting eight hours of work, right? I'm there eight hours, I get eight hours. That's like a job. But if I have a group of 10 people with me and we're all still there, I'm still just there eight hours, I've now got 80 hours. And if I have a group of 100 people with me, I'm still doing just eight hours, but I've got 800 hours. So when Dennis and I are talking about doing call workshops or text workshops and spending two or three hours, you're spending two or three to get 80, or you're spending two or three to get 200. And that's what we want you to understand. You can't just keep thinking people will attend. They need your support. They need you to let them know it's important. They need you to be the coach you need to be and to have the posture to say, this is what you need to do. Just like we're telling you right now, we are not pulling any punches. We're telling you, you need to be at international convention. That is what needs to be done if you want to grow the way we think you want to grow because you're spending these Monday nights with us for the Master UFO program. Anything you'd like to add on that, Dennis? No, it's a beautiful example of leveraging your time through the GMTSS. And I have to tell you, with the amount of time that we spend in helping universally market America global, without the GMTSS, I can tell you right now that the success that I've had over the years without our leaders tying in and then reaching out to many of the other teammates, it would have never happened. Uh, I cannot tell you, I'm a big fan, Jim, of this. And I, I love this slide. I was hoping that we'd get to this because it just makes too much sense. Right. It's, it's, it's a, it puts it all together in what we're trying to accomplish. And, you know, I remember my original goal after I went with those four people to the world conferences, said I eventually want to get a hundred people at one of these major events, Dennis. That was my I said, if I can get a hundred there, I'm on my I'm really taking off. Because I said, if I have a hundred people there and there's 30 hours of training, well then I'm getting three thousand hours of work done in one weekend. Wow. And the average person works two thousand hours a year. So I'm getting a year and a half of work done by getting to a convention. You know, people always say, well, how do our top money earners, how do they do so well? How do they do that? It's leverage. And I see Big Al putting that L factor in there. And you're right, Big Al, it's leverage. We've learned that it's better to go as a team than it is to go alone. And it's better to work as a team. So we've got to get as many people as we can there. And this really has to become our culture. And we want it to become your culture so you grow as fast as, as you can with everything. Um, Dennis, anything you'd like to add on that part? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big fan of team culture and developing that. And every person that is in this business needs to identify. And you, you basically identify this from your leaders, but you want to make sure that your organization is known for the purchasing of tickets. Your organization is known focusing on base 10. Your organization is known to get your new teammates paid fast by seven strong. These are things that are built from cultures and expectations. Uh, it's not, I keep going back to sports, Jim. You know, you played professional tennis at the collegiate level and ongoing, but it's like how many volleys do you go? How many serves yeah. do you take? You know, how many sprints do you run back and forth? Uh, you know, it's just like, Whenever you got to run more, you just got to yeah. keep going. You got to build it until it becomes second nature. You mentioned it early. The rhythm of the business is built from the culture that you install in your teams. That's right. And I think you said last week or the week before, it takes 10,000 hours to become a master at something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what we're talking. We're, not, we're talking about being masters, not average. We're talking about being master unfranchised owners who are gonna create legacies and build huge teams and do incredible things. Make that your culture of master UFO. You know, for, for as we wrap this up, Dennis, we always have our homework assignments. Yes, sir. And uh, you said it earlier, get the, get the calendar out, right? And yep. the next six months, let's see where you're going. Put it in and make it non-negotiable, guys. This is what you're gonna be doing, those locals, districts, regionals, and the major events. A lot of you already have your three tickets for convention. We're proud of that. Now let's, we're going to sell them and buy more, right? That's the next thing. So sell them and buy more. If you've already sold your two and you're using one, buy three. Push yourself further. 
we've also got the call 10 teammates. I love this one. This is basically going into what we were talking about. 10 teammates are hot prospects. Let's get people to the event, uh, which they can attend in, in person or online. So make the calls. Do Maybe do a small little call workshop. You know, that really covers our GMTSS and, and selling tickets. I hope we've given you guys some good <laughs> ideas on, on doing that. I definitely know you understand we think it's important. Absolutely. If you believe in the L factor, then you know that the GMTSS is all about it. Also, let's make sure that when you're calling your 10 teammates and hot prospects, see how many you can convert into a ticket sale. Let us know on your reports on the master UFO at marketamerica.com. We'd like to recognize some of you next week when we come back based on the number of tickets, not only calls you made, but the number of tickets that you were able to sell during that time. I believe that each and every one of you can make a difference. And the only way we can make a difference is if we do the extra reach out. Get uncomfortable, folks. Get uncomfortable because you'll get so much further. I'm not saying get rude or weird. I'm just saying get uncomfortable and do the things you've been putting off and get this homework assignment done. Jim, it's been great always, as always, working with you. Yeah, it's, it's been wonderful. I'm looking forward to next week, Dennis. We'll be back and we're going to break down the diagnostic test for people, uh, something that uh, many years ago was the gold standard of how to get started. So I'm excited for you and I to spend some time and teach people how to use that. Great. All right. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. Do something great. <laughs>